Welcome back guys, Dr. Brute 7 signing in back with another Retro Data Frog console video, the cheapest retro emulation console in 2023. The previous video of Data Frog was an analysis of the handheld itself and this one would be about customization. I have mentioned on my review video that I would be showing you guys that what all things we are able to do on this tiny wonder of a handheld as there is an active community support for it. So I will be showing you guys how to change the boot logo, adding themes, adding ROMs which will include adding of the bonus Sega Master System ROMs, changing the background music or completely remove it, fixing the bootloader bug, fixing the battery status not showing properly issue, talking about updating the firmware of the system itself. The very first thing that is recommended to do on the device and what I'm going to be starting off with is to fix an annoying bug in the device's bootloader which may result in a non-bootable device. You definitely don't want that. So let's step right in and fix that issue. Now you guys are going to go to the link in the description and download the bootloader bug fix. Insert your Datafrog's SD card into your computer. Let it show up. Now this here is my SF2000's memory card. Now before starting anything, we're going to make a backup of the BIOS settings. The one that says Microsoft Word Auto Recovery document. BISRV this is where all the BIOS information of the console is so you're going to make a backup of this before starting off with any of the following processes I already have it copied and pasted right over here so you also do that keep it in a safe location second thing that you're going to do go to the link in the description and download the SF2000 bootloader bug fix after that extract the contents using a WinRAR or WinZip extractor once the contents have been extracted you're going to copy the update firmware folder and go to the root of your SF2000's SD card and paste it. After that, just eject your SD card, put it back into your data frogs. Insert your SD card into your handheld consoles. Just start your system. If you noticed carefully, there was like an indicator that says update success. That was the fix. As easy as that. So you're free to delete the update folder, the copied update folder from the root of your SD card if you'd like. We just fixed the bootloader bug. Alright, let's move on to the next steps. So the second thing that we're going to do is fixing the battery meter. So just head over to the link in the description and you're going to be directed to the battery meter fix tool. This is only for the stock battery that comes with the SF2000. If you have upgraded to a larger megahertz battery, then this patch is not needed. Step one is selecting the bisrv.asd file. Just choose the file from the SD card. So head over to your Datafrog's SD card and head over into your BIOS folder. This is where you're going to see the bisrv file. So just select it, open it and you're going to see a green status symbol that says the ASD file has been detected. Now step two is patching the battery levels. Just patch it. Now third is downloading the patched BIOS file. And download it. Head over into your download folder. Copy the patch to download. Head back into your connected Datafrog's SD card. Head over into your BIOS folder. And this is where you're going to paste the patched BISRV file. That's it. From the next boot onwards, the proper battery status is going to be shown on screen. Remember when I booted up the console and it said Frog Station, that was a custom boot logo. I'm going to show you guys the steps how to add in custom boot logos. Now there is a way for you to add in your own set of images. I haven't tried that out you're free to do so however i'm going to show you guys how to add in from the selected set of boot logos that are already provided from here you can find the link from the description this page holds all the themes the boot logos and the background music as well we're going to change them one after another let's start with the boot logo changer so you're going to go to the link in the description that says boot logo changer you will be taken to this page with our memory card inserted head over into the bios folder select the bisrv file once it gives us the green status symbol Symbol, we're going to select the new boot logo that we want to apply just select the boot logo of your choice there's a whole collection of them so let's select this one the one with link so we're gonna just save this image we're going to choose the saved file it says sf2000 logo.png the third step would be to just download the updated bisrv.asd file delete any previous downloads of the bisrv files if you see any numbers in brackets just delete them copy the updated bisrv file head over 
into your SF2000 SD card into the BIOS folder, paste it, replace the file. From next boot, you're going to see the updated boot logo. All right, so now it's time to install custom themes. The very first thing that you're going to make sure of, head over into your connected SD card and you're going to make a backup of your base resource folder. Keep it at a safe location. Just in case if anything goes wrong, then you can divert the changes. You just copy the base BISRV file and the resources folder back over into your SD card. Take your pick. Some of these themes comes with their own custom background music and boot logo. Only a couple of themes that are available. So I have selected the retro wave theme. Just download the theme of your choice. You'll be taken to this second page. Just click on the download raw file. Head over into the extracted folder. Now as you can see this one has an updated boot logo. It's your choice if you want to update it or not I'm just going to apply the custom theme so now here the one that says put in resource folder head over there just select all the files copy them head back into your connected SD card into your resources folder paste them all right it's all done so from next boot onwards you're going to see the custom theme applied now we are going to add or remove the background music now head over to the same link where you are going to find the custom boot logo or the themes now here is a section that says bgm click over there and you're going to see a whole list of background music now if you want to remove the background music select the one that says no bgm if you want to add in a background music just select the music of your choice i selected duck hunt intro i already have the file extracted this here is the downloaded file once you click on the download download you're going to be taken to the second page click on the download raw file head over into the extracted folder some of them will come under the resource folder instead it's up to you you can just copy the folder as a whole if it says resources but for me it just says duck hunt theme so we're going to head over into the file itself we're going to copy this file head over back into our connected sd card head over into the resources folder and paste it is going to ask to replace the file in the destination go ahead and do so from next boot onwards we're going to have duck hunts theme music let's boot up the system and we're going to see the custom boot logo there you go this here is the custom boot logo this is the applied custom background music and this here is the custom theme If you have chosen to have no background music, then you won't have any background music. This is how you apply custom boot logo, custom themes and custom background music. Or if you want to have it completely removed, you can also remove it. Okay, so time for the most interesting part. We're going to add in ROMs from external sources into our system. So if you have any other ROM collections that you would want to add to the list with the already included ROMs that came in with the system. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Download this one application named Tadpole. This is an all-in-one GUI SF2000 management application. There is also another application named Frog Tool. However, that one is much more basic and command prompt based. We're not going to consider that for this tutorial. This was updated just five days back at the time of making this video. So once you download that Tadpole software you're going to get an exe file you just go ahead and run it it's not going to work until and unless you plug in your data frogs sd card into your computer as soon as you are going to insert the sd card into your computer tadpole software is going to detect it automatically and scan for all the contents all these stuff that I've shown you throughout the video, you would be able to do it in a couple of clicks. However, some of the more delicate stuff like fixing the bootloader issue or the battery fix issue, I would rather do it manually. It's a very simplistic process. Along with the addition of custom themes and stuff, you do not get the option to get a preview of the custom themes. You do not have the option to preview and select the, the custom theme and the background music of your choice because some of these themes comes with the boot logo, background music. If you do it through here, it's going to get replaced. This tool I specifically use just for the ROM management purposes where we can, we can add or delete ROMs, we can change the game shortcut icons. Yeah, they are already in built to the into the system and it's it's kind of like a pain in the ass anyways we're going to talk about that later all of these platforms they follow the same format so i'm going to just show one the same process is going to be repeating 
for all the systems except the arcade emulator because arcade emulators are a pain in the ass regardless of which platform or you are using it on they have always been a bit jittery so we're going to talk about that later let's select a platform super famicom which is the super nintendo now if you check here the list of the extensions are going to be detected by the device so my super nintendo rom pack these are in 7z format any files with this extension the system will not detect it or load it we're gonna have to make sure by going into properties and check if they're in zip format or not if you do not want to go through the extraction process anyways so since we have this in 7z format i already have the game that i want to add to the list three ninjas kickback extracted you want to add in a customized thumbnail the software will do it automatically for you in order for that to happen make sure that both the rom along with the thumbnail that you want to use are put under one folder and also both the thumbnail and the rom files should have the same title now we're going to add the rom into our sd card hit on add roms and select the rom file it's going to ask you one rom added to the sd card do you want to add the thumbnail you can change the settings to either pick your own or try to download automatically we're gonna select yes we're gonna have to select the folder the folder itself so three ninjas kickback select folder and it's going to start compiling and adding the Super Nintendo ROM along with the thumbnail. Okay, ROM thumbnails successfully changed. So there you go. We have the three ninjas kickback.zsf file. Just click on view and there you go. You have the thumbnail added already. So this is how you add the ROMs for all the systems except the arcade emulator. Now we're going to talk about adding the secret sega master system roms so for master system roms to work get your backup of the master system roms if they come in zip format or if they come in a 7z format just extract them just copy them head over into your connected sd card into the rom folder and this is where you're going to paste all the roms i already have them copied and pasted let's talk about the arcade emulator the set number of games that already came in with the device almost all of them run perfectly i have tried a lot of the rom files they did not work until i found this list of roms specifically made for the sf2000 data frog you would be able to see all of the roms that are playable on the arcade system and the versions as well we're gonna try to look for one of the roms we do not need to extract the arcade emulators roms because arcade emulator roms they come in bundled up with a different set of files and folders so for bionic commando we're also going to add in a thumbnail okay so let's head over to our tadpole software and select arcade emulator let the roms load up now we're gonna select add roms we're gonna select the zip file gonna click on no for this one so bionic one dot zip file has been added we're gonna select it and click on view and click on select new image so from here select our downloaded thumbnail and overwrite cover there you go successfully changed and we're just gonna head over under consoles tab and refresh the thumbnails and the roms list so this is how you add rom files through external sources for all the platforms now that we have added all the roms into the system i'm going to show you guys how to change the shortcut icons this is a pain in the ass regardless of you assigning the games on the shortcut slot that you would want to appear on the title screen under the selected emulator still the shortcut icons are not going to be the same this will happen if you would want to change the list of games or if you have applied a new custom theme first thing is that select the games of your choice click on the drop down menu and you can assign the shortcut slots i am doing this for the mega drive console i have the set of four games already selected and assigned so now we're going to just add the shortcuts click on change game shortcut icons just click on no here now look at this all these games are updated that I would want to see on my shortcut list. However, the thumbnails are not telling. We have Sonic, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles. But the games are something else. We're going to start with Contra Hardcores. Click on change icon. Select the thumbnail of your choice that you downloaded from the internet. It's going to resize and assign them accordingly. So we're just going to click on Contra Hardcores and open. Icon 2, Aladdin, Icon 3 bare knuckle 3 icon 4 castle of illusion now this is how it's going to show up on our data frog click on save update it your game shortcuts head over to console refresh thumbnails and roms list 
all has been done and that's it so we have successfully changed the game shortcuts along with assigning the games of our choice unfortunately we won't be able to do that for the sega master system because technically the master system doesn't exist in the system software okay so we are on our data frog system let's first check our shortcut icons mega drive all of the games that we have added they're showing up like how we want them to show up as contra hard corps aladdin bare knuckle 3 and castle of illusion hit on a and it's going to load up the rom okay let's head over to super nintendo press on start and we're gonna check the three ninjas kickback the rom that we added that's the thumbnail and that's the game if we press on start is going to load the game now for the super nintendo roms they run slow on the first run press start and select at the same time quit the game and run it a second time this time is going to load up the rom properly now this is kind of like a bug or glitch in the system there's still no fix for this onto the system menu and select game list now under the game list folder you're going to find all the added sega master system roms hit on start your rom is going to load up now with the moment of truth let's head over to mame this is bionic commando rom this is the thumbnail that we added for the system moment of truth fingers crossed let's see how accurate the list is i think we have hit a dead end the rom is not loading up for the arcade emulators get a couple of backup copies of different versions of the game that you are trying to add and then just test them one after another i know it's a pain in the ass but that's how it is even the developers of this system they don't know how the arcade emulator roms work so our system just froze we're gonna have to just shut it off turn it back on all right guys so that wraps up all the most important aspects of the data frog console i've covered all the important customization options and aspects that you are able to do on the console one last thing before i wrap this tutorial up i told you guys that i'm going to talk about updating of the firmware of the console itself insert your sd cards into your computer and run tadpole software if you head under os you're going to see the first option it says firmware select the first option that says detect and update firmware so detecting firmware version now this is going to take a little bit of time depending on your internet connection because i have checked that the firmware file itself is quite big i think it's eight gigabytes or so so for me it says you're already on the latest firmware so yeah that wraps up the tutorial i've shown you guys all there is to it everything about the data frog i've covered it all starting from reviewing the console and all the way to customizing the console according to your likeness if you found this video useful and informative make sure to drop in a like and subscribe if you want to get a hold of these data frog consoles please make sure to use my affiliate link if you do then that's going to help my channel a lot i also have the non-affiliate link posted you can buy your piece through the non-affiliate link as well there is no extra amount or anything of that sort the link that i have posted as an affiliate link i ordered mine off of that link that's the cheapest option and also you get free delivery i want you guys to experience like i've said what i experience in terms of gaming there is no catch in that so yeah feel free to use the affiliate link if not you feel free to use the non-affiliate link whichever is your choice keep on supporting the channel keep on checking out my contents drop by on my live streams drop in on the fun and join in with the craziness you know i'm gonna see you guys on the next one dr brute 7 signing off peace